Thank you, choir, for that wonderful rendition. Next, we have Mass Reverend Hickson from the uh, West Court Street Church of God to come. He will not be given the benediction, but he will have a few comments. Uh, no? I know you have to leave early, so. No? Okay. He will not be given a few comments. Are you going to stay here for the. You will be leaving early? Or you won't? Okay. He'll be here all the way. All right. So next, I don't think the next person will be leaving early. Uh, we'll have the almost honorable Inez Brown come up. Thank you. Thank you, honorable Mr. Floyd Clack. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Many people think that the focus on the oath of office in the Founding Fathers is merely patriotic, rhetoric, and may question the significance of the oath of office in our world's current environment. It is important to point out, however, that an oath is, and I quote, a solemn appeal to God to witness the truth of a statement or the sincerity of a promise coupled with an imprecation, imprecation of divine judgment in the event of falsehood Amen. or breach of obligation, Amen. end of quote. This definition is captured in the ancient Greek physician Hippocrates' oath, which is one of the world's oldest and most famous oaths. And again, I quote, I swear, or according to my ability and judgment, I will keep this oath with the purity and holiness. I will pass my life and practice my art. While I continue to keep this oath unviolated, may it be granted to me to enjoy life and the practice of the art respected by all men in all times. But should I trespass and violate this oath, may the reverse be my lot." Amen. End of quote. Several concepts of this oath still resonate. And the oath of office, as we know it today, has withstood the time, although its words have gone through many, many transformations. The significance placed, it by, placed upon it by the Founding Fathers has remained the same. Today, November 11, 2013, the newly elected Flint City Council will re receive the oath of office. And I would ask each of them to stand and remain standing as I call their respective names. First, the Honorable Eric Mays, First Ward. The Honorable Jacqueline Poplar, Second Ward. The Honorable Bryant Nolden, Third Ward. The Honorable Joshua Freeman, Fourth Ward. And to my left and your right, the Honorable Wantoise Davis. Mr. Davis represents, so we'll be representing the Fifth Ward. Applause 
the Honorable Sheldon A. Neely, sixth grade. The Honorable Mon Monica Galloway, seventh grade. The Honorable Victoria Van Buren, eighth ward. And last, but certainly not least, the Honorable Scott Kincaid, Ninth Ward. At this time, I would ask that each of you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will uphold the constitutions and abide by the laws of the United States of America, the state of Michigan, and the city of Flint, and that I will discharge faithfully the duties of the office of city council person on behalf of all the citizens, on behalf of all the citizens of the city of Flint, to the best of my ability. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome your new city council. At this point in time in our program, it's appropriate that we give each of uh, our council, newly elected council persons an opportunity to give brief, appropriate remarks. And we are allocating each one of them one minute. We set a half minute, but we know they'll take one. So one minute each, and we'll go in numerical order, starting with Mr. Mays of the First Ward. Mr. Mays. Praise is to the almighty God. He's the head of my life. I'd say I'd like to also recognize my pastor, Pastor Daniel Moore at Shiloh, and the Shiloh Church family who have stood behind me. I would also say I would be beside myself if I didn't acknowledge and say to Daddy, Pastor Mays, that um, we miss you, but we love you, and your name helped me. I would also like to say to Moderator Randolph, my prayers is with you. Get well. President Fuller, I love you. Pastor Flynn, I appreciate you, and Pastor Threlkill. Pastor Threlkill, you my point man. I love you. Mr. Gilchrist, Woodrow Stanley, Raynetta Speed, pray for me. Christine and Carrie, I see you. I tell you what, there's a lot of pastors in a church community. I'm looking over at Monica Galloway from Ebenezer. See, they can say what they want, but the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I could say it in a minute, or I could say it in two, but I'll leave you with my mother's. I call it hers, but when she got sick, I found it. I prayed for a little more time. She's here. Mother, I love you. I'll say that she showed me a script in the Bible, and Pastor Pettigrew, Pastor Seldom Williams and every other pastor who I don't name, Pastor Wheeler on the corner of homes in Detroit. Y'all was with me and it was angels all around. We had no money, no literature, no yard signs in the primary. They blessed us with just a little bit in the general. I'm gonna leave you with one of my mother's favorite scriptures. It comes and it's found in Proverbs 
the third chapter, the fifth and sixth verse. Trust in God with all thine heart. <laughs> Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy paths. Jobs and crimes. We will fix Flint. Jobs and crimes. We will fix Flint. Be here tonight. Be here tonight. Be here tonight. The Lord is in the fixing business, and I ain't going to let the devil stand in my way. God bless you. First of all, I truly want to thank God, who is the head of my life. As some of you know, I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood. But I was chosen to do what I do by the citizens of the second ward for the city of Flint. I feel honored, and the reason why I feel honored, the second ward citizens of the city of Flint allowed me an uh, unheard of little nobody to come into this office in 2005 when nobody knew me. They didn't know anything about me, no political experience. And God allowed me to step through this door in the primary where I beat the incumbent. Then he also allowed me